Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I am really excited because I am bringing back my anticipated release videos. I did so many of those videos before so I will link them above in a playlist and now they are back. This is my anticipated thriller releases for February but keep your eyes open for an anticipated horror release video because I have a lot of horror books that I'm really looking forward to as well. I'll also be sharing my Lights Out book club pick for March which is exciting. I'm trying to announce these book club picks farther in advance so people can prepare their TBRs because I know a lot of people like to plan their TBRs really early so I will be getting out information faster in the future. If you want to keep up to date too for my book club make sure to look in my description and click the link for the Lights Out Book Club Instagram. I have all of the information there and it's the fastest place to learn information about live shows and all of that. Also, I often choose, you know, new release books, so that's fun as well to read new releases with you all and discuss them. But before we get into sharing the new releases, I want to thank my sponsor for this video, Ana Luisa Jewelry. I'm super excited to be partnering with this brand again. I absolutely love their jewelry so much. It's so high quality and literally every time I wear it, I get compliments. They're having an awesome Valentine's Day sale right now where it is buy one, get one 50% off. Ana Luisa crafts high quality jewelry pieces at a very affordable price and they're carbon neutral from packaging to products and they care about their impact on the planet, which is so important because packaging can so negatively impact the environment and their designs are unique and simple and they just really add to every outfit. So the first item they sent me is this beautiful amber ring. It's so beautiful, I love the size and it just feels so elegant on my finger. They also sent me this Hannah necklace, which is white and it is a pearl and has a rose engraved on it, which is so, so stunning. It has a very dark academic look and it's very simple, but it's also a statement piece. And they also sent me the Mish necklace. This one is beautiful. It comes in multiple different colors and I also love the chain on this. Look how cool it is. And I think that these stack really, really nicely. Don't forget to use my link in the description to shop this awesome sale. And without further ado, let's get into the video. The Snowstorm by Triona Walsh came out on February 2nd, and this one looks really intriguing. It's an isolated setting, which always catches my eye. And it's the perfect time of year to read a wintry, snowy setting. This also deals with the reunion trope, which I oftentimes really enjoy in thrillers. So six friends gather on a snowy Irish island and they actually end up getting snowed in and they all have secrets. There's no electricity and they're all stuck together and someone is found dead and it becomes clear that the killer is among them and they have to figure out who is killing people off and how to make it out alive. This is a pretty common synopsis for a book, but oftentimes I feel like I'm underwhelmed by these concepts. So I'm really hoping that this one will do it really well. Oftentimes books with this sort of synopsis, I enjoy it when the atmosphere is really, really played into and the drama is focused on a little bit less or the drama needs to be really, really good. So my fingers are crossed for this one and I hope I love it. The next book is actually the Lights Out Book Club's pick for March. So I wanna share all all of that information with you. If you don't know already, I host a thriller horror book club that meets every month with a different co-host and it's called the Lights Out Book Club. Such Pretty Flowers by K.L. Sarah is going to be the March book club pick and my co-host will be Elizabeth from Reading Riley. This one is coming out on the 7th of the month and I am very excited to have Elizabeth as my co-host. I've been wanting to collaborate with her for a while so I think it'll be a really really fun time having her on my channel and discussing this book with you all. If you don't already know, she has a book club of her own called the Midnight Society, so make sure you check that out. She just started it recently and she chooses some really, really cool books for that book club. She also does some really awesome videos here on YouTube, so I will link all her information in the description, but let's get on to the synopsis of this book. It says, get it out of me. It was the last message Holly received from her brother, Dane, before he was found cleaved open in his fiance's lavish Savannah townhouse. Police ruled his death a suicide sparked by psychosis, but Holly can't shake the idea that something else must have happened. 
something involving another message he sent that night, the one that mentioned a game his fiance Mora wanted to play. Determined to discover the truth, Holly begins to stalk Mora, a magnetic black-eyed florist with a penchant for carnivorous plants. But what begins as an investigation quickly veers into a darker fixation, one that lures Holly into the depths of Mora's world. Savannah High Society, eerie black roses, and a whisper of something more sinister. Soon Holly is feeling a dark attraction to the one woman she shouldn't trust. As Holly falls deeper for Mora and her secrets, she's left with only one choice, find out what happened to Dane before she meets the same fate. A woman investigating her brother's apparent suicide finds herself falling for her prime suspect, his darkly mysterious girlfriend in this edgy southern gothic thriller. So I don't know about you, but this sounds fantastic to me. It has so many elements I like in books, a gothic setting, floral elements that are creepy. I really enjoyed this in House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland and Obsession. Oh, it just sounds so good. So I am really looking forward to discussing this one with all of you for the book club in March. So the next one I'm interested in because of the format it's told in. I really, really love mixed media. I think it makes the reading experience unique and really engaging. And so this next one, I read that that was a part of the book and it immediately made me interested. So this one is called The Stranger in Our House by Sarah A. Denzil. And this one is coming out on February 7th. This one is about a family who relocates from their very busy apartment to a secluded house out by the woods and everything seems to be going great, but their son one day wanders into the forest and he goes missing for three days. And when they find him, he is in a tree hollow and he has cuts all over his body and doesn't remember what happened. And he starts to act very, very different from his previous personality. And his mother soon starts to suspect that this boy who has returned isn't actually her son. This sounds like it sort of borders on horror, which I really love when thrillers have a very dark element. So I am looking forward to getting my hands on this and trying it out. The House Guest by Hank Philippi Ryan is coming out on the 7th as well. Alyssa has recently been dumped by her powerful and wealthy ex-husband, and she's convinced he's trying to ruin her life. She ends up meeting Bree, who is running from a dangerous relationship and allows her to stay in her guest house, and they spark up a friendship. Bree then makes an offer, and this offer would solve both of their problems, but no one is what they seem. So this one is very vague in the synopsis, but it has good reviews and it sounds interesting. Letting a mysterious stranger stay in your guest house sounds really creepy. Stone Cold Fox is coming out on February 14th, and I'm going to read the synopsis for this one. Like any enterprising woman, Bea knows what she's worth and is determined to get all she deserves. It just so happens that what she deserves is to marry rich. After a lifetime of forced instruction in the art of swindling men by her mother, Bea wants nothing more than to escape her shadow, close the door on their sordid past, and disappear safely into old money domesticity. When Bea finds her final mark in the perfectly dull, blue-blooded Colin, she's ready to deploy all her tricks one last time. The challenge isn't getting the ring, but rather the approval of Colin's family and everyone else in their tax bracket, particularly his childhood best friend Gail. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gail isn't a threat to an expert like Bea, but what begins as an amusing cat and mouse game quickly develops into a dangerous chase. As the truth of Bea's past threatens to come roaring out, she finds herself racing against the clock to pass the finish line before everything is exposed. So this one has a lot of positive Goodreads reviews. People are praising this character, they loved reading from her perspective, and it sounds like it has some rich people drama in it. So if that's something you're interested in and gravitate towards, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. The next one I am maybe the most excited for, and it is called The Writing Retreat. It's by Andrea Bartz and it comes out on February 21st. And Ashley actually was the first one to bring this to my attention, Ashley from Ashley's Little Library, and she absolutely loved it. So I was very, very excited to get my hands on this. It's actually my book of the month. I'm just patiently waiting for it, but I am definitely reading this as soon as I get it. This deals with an author, which I really love reading stories about authors, as well as, again, one of my favorite tropes and thrillers, an isolated snowy setting. So this is about a writer named Alex, and she is invited to this exclusive month-long writing retreat at this famous horror author's mansion. But Rosa Vallow's estate is rumored to be haunted. So Alex agrees, even though her ex-best friend is going to be there and her ex-best friend sounds like she's her arch nemesis basically, but regardless of that, she decides to go anyway. 
But once they all arrive, Rosa announces that they will all have to compose a novel from scratch and whoever has the best one gets an amazing publishing deal. So they all are working against each other in an isolated setting. There's tensions, obviously. Then one of the writers disappears and there's a snowstorm. They're all locked in and they are fighting for their lives. So a lot of these isolated thrillers, like I said earlier, have very, very similar concepts. Some just really work for me because the writing clicks or I really connect to the drama that's happening in it or just the overall tone of the book I enjoy and some of it falls really flat. So I am once again really hoping that this is going to be one of my new favorites, isolated setting thrillers. I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca McKay is coming out on the 21st. This one really grabbed my attention because it sounds like a dark academic thriller, which is one of my favorite subgenres in thrillers. I love an academic setting. It really adds to the story. Academic settings are always moody. There's a lot of drama that's going on. I always love the descriptions of the buildings and I feel like they're very cozy. Anytime I find a new thriller with a dark academic atmosphere, I am immediately gravitated toward it. And this is how I felt about this one. So in this one, the main character Character is a successful film professor and she has a podcast and she desperately wants to forget her family tragedy that happened when she was a child and she spent four miserable years in a New Hampshire boarding school and her senior year her roommate was actually murdered but the circumstances surrounding her roommate's death are still discussed heavily online and the school's athletic trainer was arrested and convicted but she's starting to believe that maybe things aren't as they seemed and so she's actually invited back to the school to teach a course. So she goes back and tries to solve what actually happened all those years ago. The Angel Maker by Alex North is coming out on February 28th. This one says, growing up in a beautiful house in the English countryside, Katie Shaw lived a charmed life. At the cusp of graduation, she had big dreams, a devoted boyfriend and a little brother she protected fiercely. Until the day a violent stranger changed the fate of her family forever. Years later, still unable to live down the guilt surrounding what happened to her brother, Chris, and now with a child of her own to protect, Katie struggles to separate the real threats from the imagined. Then she gets the phone call. Chris has gone missing and needs his big sister once more. Meanwhile, Detective Lawrence Page is facing a particularly gruesome crime. A distinguished professor of fate and free will has been brutally murdered just hours after firing his staff. All the leads point back to two old cases, the gruesome attack on teenager Christopher Shaw and the despicable crimes of a notorious serial killer who legend had it could see the future. So this one sounds like an interesting serial killer novel and I've never read anything by Alex North but this may be the first book I try out by this author. It's One of Us by JT Ellison is coming out on February 28th. This concept is very interesting and this is about a main character who desperately has wanted children and she's tried fertility treatments and IVF and they have unfortunately failed. She's in a terrible place when the police show up and tell her that DNA results show that her husband's child is actually a prime suspect in a murder investigation. And she had no idea that her husband had children, but he comes clean and he admits that he was a sperm donor in the past, but he has no idea how many biological children he has from this. And so obviously this puts them in a very scary situation. And as the murder investigation continues, more terrible truths come to light and a Olivia has some secrets of her own. This next one is marketed as a YA sapphic thriller and it's called Missing Dead Girls by Sarah Walters. Tilly was forced to move by her mom to a quiet suburb to try to start over after the events that happened her junior year of high school. She soon becomes obsessed with Madison Frank and they end up having a summer romance. One day Madison goes missing and a text of her bloody body is sent to the student body and this number has Tilly's name on it. So this seems like it has Gossip Girl vibes or Ace of Spade vibes and I am really intrigued by this one to see what is going on in the story. The next book is The Island by Natasha Preston and I've actually never read anything by Natasha Preston which is pretty surprising because she's a very very popular YA thriller author. I don't gravitate so much to YA books but I still have read a fair amount so it's shocking that I haven't read a Natasha Preston before. I really need to but this one comes out on the 28th as well and this one also sounds almost exactly the same as the book Never Coming Home by Kate Williams. They are both very very similar premises so I may try to read both of them and see which one kind of does this concept better. 
but this is about a group of influencers who have been invited to a private island that has this amusement park opening up. Obviously this is for marketing purposes and the company wants them to hype it up before it opens to the general population. But once they arrive, they are shocked and realize they are going to have to fight for their lives and try to make it off the island alive. So this trope is so fun. I love the concept of people being stranded on an island trying to survive, people being picked off one by one. Once again, in an isolated setting. I think it'll be interesting to have influencer characters and I would love to read this one soon. I also just love reading about amusement parks. I think that's an awesome setting. So I have pretty high hopes for this one. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa's amazing sale that's going on right now. You can use the link in my description to access this sale. Also, if you see this video after the sale has ended, you can use my code RIVETINGREADS20 to get 20% off your order. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.